Epic changes to one comfy UI version of Live Portrait mean you can now ditch Insight Face and instead go open source. Insight Face, recently used by things such as Face ID and PhotoMaker 2, can't be used for commercial purposes, so going open source is great news. Here, yeah, check this out. If we scroll down a bit to the updates, there. Added Media Pipe as an alternative to Insight Face. Everything should now be covered under MIT and Apache 2 licenses when using it. And just above, you might have seen there, there's also a second update. So there's also a face alignment cropper option now as well. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can totally avoid the use of Insight Face staying nicely in open source land, as well as workflows for animating images, videos, and even with your live webcam feed. To start with, you'll need to have Comfy UI and Comfy UI Manager installed and running. Check the links in the video description for a guide on how to do that if you haven't done so already. Hardware wise, I didn't see this go over 6GB of VRAM, so you should be good to go even on the entry level GPUs. With large videos, you may need a good chunk of RAM, however, so at least 32GB is recommended. For installing custom nodes part one in Comfy UI, open up Manager, there we go, and go to the Custom Nodes Manager. You'll then want to search for Live Portrait up at the top, and the one to install is the same one I've got installed there, ID number 269. Don't worry about this bit where it says Insight Face is required because that is no longer true. Don't forget to restart when prompted, and then you can open one of the Live Portrait workflows. There are three workflows available there in the custom nodes examples directory. You've got one for image, real time and video. Opening the workflow will likely result in a message saying you don't have various nodes installed. So once again, go over to manager, click install missing custom nodes and restart again. After that restart, you should be able to run the workflow. Here is the first one then using a single image and animating it using a driving video. The driving video I'm using as an example here is from the Thin Plate Spline repository. If you want to test with exactly the same thing, it's in a good format being 512 by 512 with just a head in the frame. I've made a few changes to their default workflow in that I've colored some nodes in as well as grouped things up to make everything fit on the screen better. It makes it easier both to look at and to understand. Gray is so gray after all. There are so many numbers and things in here you can change that it would take forever to go through each one in detail. Plus, for the most part, you don't actually need to change them anyway. However, there are a bunch of pretty important ones which I'll go through now. The most important one here is up in the top left where you pick between good and evil mode. Uh, I mean between open source and non-commercial use. The open source options there, we've got media pipe cropper. So if you want to use that, you can connect it up that way. Or you've got the face alignment cropper as well. This one also has multiple options, blaze face, blaze face back camera or SFD. You can also change the detector type there, FP16, BF16, or FP32. The red node over here that's also disabled is the Insight Face Cropper. I won't be using that at all, and you don't need to install it. But the option is there if you want to. The second option you'll want to change is to pick a face of your own there in the Load Image node. Pick whatever image you want. I am scaling it here, so sometimes you can put a really big image in there like 4K, and that will take up a lot of RAM. But if you scale it down to something like 1.25 megapixels, then that looks pretty good too. The third option is the input video, also known as the driving video. This should ideally be 512 by 512, just like we've got there, a talking, slightly moving head. Do try not to zoom in and out, as that will make things look a little bit weird. In the options group, we've got a cropper, which you can connect once again that way, or just go back for the raw images and the live portrait retargeting. So that's if you just want to change the eyes and the lips. So again, you can either connect or disconnect that. The cropping is interesting, however, and uh, thankfully this workflow is really quick to run. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's just add a preview image on that. And then we can see the output from that node. So in this case, I'm just taking the raw images. So we've got that one connected. And if we have a look up there, there we go. So that's moving quite nicely. However, if we go and connect this one in, so we've got the cropped image, 
and then run that one through. As you can see, we've got a totally different set of results. It's also rotated them all as well. So it's basically keeping the head in alignment. The problem with that is, is the result is really, really, really wobbly. So I'm not sure when you would ever use that. The other option there is the retargeting info. There we go, we'll pop that back. So you can move the eyes or the lips. So for example, I can turn that off and we've got some quite exaggerated lip movement there. So if we run that version through, what we get this time is just a static head with the lips moving. Another important setting is up here at the top in the live portrait cropper node. The scale one will just focus in really tightly on the face. So I've got it back to uh, the normal mode. I haven't got retargeting on. So if I run that through with scale one, let's see if you can see what has changed. Ah, oh, yes, that's nice and cursed. As you can see with scale one, it's focused in just on the face and it has completely ignored the rest of the head. So if you've got somebody with a massive hair, do things like that, you may need to increase the scale to get all of that in. In summary, for this workflow then, we can use a growing number of open source options for the face cropper, along with a driving video to animate a static image of a face. While you can use a whole variety of different human faces, the generalization to animals option doesn't seem to be available yet. Yes, it's distressing for me as well. At least you don't have to go 100% human, it just needs to have some recognizable features. You aren't limited to just a static image though, as you can also use a video. Let's take a look at that now. In essence, all we need to do for video is add another load video node. We can put that one in there and instead you'd be connecting that up or to the scale, whichever one. There we go. So now you're effectively using a video input. The other thing to take a note of there is you'd also want to change these relative motion modes. So for a video input, you want source video smoothed. Uh, you've also got another one down here, which is quite useful, single frame. We'll look at that more when you're doing the live webcam, but that's basically you can change the expression of one image to another. So let's put that on source video smooth. I'm actually gonna load up uh, a slightly different workflow where I've, I've moved the nodes around, especially for video. Okay, here is the video version. Now there are some slight changes as mentioned. Basically, because we've got two videos now, you've also got to manage things like the number of frames in each of them. So you can't have one video that's longer than another one because then it will just crash. So the way around that is to have the frame load cap. The way I've got it set up here is it will take the frame count out of that one and put it into that one. So whatever you set there in frame load cap, will be the limit for that video, which will then also apply to that video. As we're connecting audio up as well, the other thing to match is the FPS or the frame rate. So I'm setting that to 24 and then also over in here, that becomes 24 as well. For example, I can use this video as the input instead of the single image and then record myself to generate the driving video. Without the retargeting option enabled, the output looks like this, which honestly isn't too bad. A little bit of head wobble, but nothing too dramatic, and the mouth movements are reasonably close. If you do opt to use the retargeting, then you don't get any head wobble at all. Trouble is, it looks like you're talking through your teeth. Um, moo, moo, moo. Still, it's funny either way. As you can see, much the same as the driving image basically, but you can input a video, all nice and easy. Okay, one final one then, the live webcam version. Here we have the live webcam version then. The relative motion mode here is single frame and we're animating that. So basically it's taking an image from your webcam and putting it in there. If you just queue it up once, there we go, a little open mouth expression then that's fine. Or of course, you can open up the extra options, auto queue, and then when you queue prompt, it's uh, uh, it's sort of real time. It's sort of real time. Not the fastest in the world, but still fun anyway. As you've seen, we can now avoid using Insight Face and still have loads of fun. The main thing here is you can do things the open source way, and that's cool. I can't wait to see what else open source will bring us in the future. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day, showing us AI in a really British way.